Yo, Elliot, since I know that my character type is that of a logic man, I understand my urge to analyze and understand people, religion, life, and so on. I did my sacraments as a child, but I was raised kind of new age. So my first reading of Christianity was Never, Neville Goodard, uh, Reverend Ike, those teachings that are metaphysical. Jesus is a symbol, and the Bible is a book of ourself with metaphors to uncode our mind. Now I'm reading Christian theology, and they describe everything as history. Do you understand the Bible as historical record or a book of encoded wisdom or both? May the Lord forgive me if I am wrong. I'll do my best to answer this with piety and reason, but it is both. It is a little bit of both. I think that, the, I mean, and you know that it's a little bit of both because a lot of the books are, there. there's prayers and there's songs and there's poems, right? And so poems and prayers and songs aren't real. They're, a lot of time the language is used to point to a, a greater, a bigger thing, right? Like um, when you go, if you're driving to Colorado, you see a sign that says Colorado, but that sign is not Colorado, right? It's a symbol telling you, oh, I'm getting to Colorado. Or when you go to the, uh, you go to, to Denny's, right? Because Denny's, Denny's is a restaurant for dumb people. <laughs> God forgive me. Have mercy on me. Denny's is a restaurant for dumb people, people who can't read. That's why they have pictures of everything on there. If you go to Denny's, you open up their uh, menu, it's all pictures. So you don't make no mistake about what you're getting. But when, if you look at that picture and you say, I want that, right? I want that. You're not going to get that. That's a symbol representing something else. And one more for you. The map is not the territory, right? The Bible is a map. It's not the territory. It's a book of symbols. That's why it's called the word. What are words? Symbols. What are symbols? Something that represents something greater than itself. The Bible is rife with symbols. Jesus is called the word. Why do you think Jesus is called the word? Because the word represents something greater than itself, right? Jesus is God incarnate, the word, right? So the word is, represents, right? Is, is representative, right? Anyway, is the, is the physical manifestation. Anyway, so the gospels in, in no way, shape, or form are symbolic. I believe the gospels are history. I mean, it's, so, it's pretty obvious that the gospel is history, but if you read Revelations, which was written by John, there's a lot of symbols, right? He says that he saw a great portent in the heavens and a woman clothed with the stars and the moon under her feet and a crown, right? And then there was a dragon that wanted to take her baby and then there was a all that. All that, I, I don't think he, I don't think that happened historically, but it happened spiritually, right? It happened, he happened to see something that we can't see, right? So it was like a vision. Are visions history? I don't know. Could you say that the whore of Babylon riding on a tiger with seven heads and 13 horns is historical? I don't think so. I don't think you could say that historical, but what is it once again? It's a symbol. It symbolizes something, right? So it's both. And I'm just kind of like, I'm just kind of like playing with it a little bit here, doing the best that I can. But Jesus is a historical figure. There's no doubt about it that Jesus is a historical figure because all you have to do is read history of given by secular people. There, there's secular history of Jesus, right? And of course, I don't have this off the top of my head, but there are historians, right, that were around at the time. And you could do your own research. Uh, uh, Roman historians who spoke of this man from Nazareth who created a, a stir within the people of Israel and they had to put him down, right? They, they killed him, right? So it, that literally happened. Jesus 
was a man. Jesus was here. There's historical proofs for his life. Now, he committed, he, he did mis- miracles. And so a lot of people will not believe that God could do whatever God wants to do. And so they would say that Jesus, those miracles are symbols. He never, for example, walked on water or didn't resurrect. That requires an ascent to faith. I love that term, ascent to faith. There's some, there, there's sort of a catch-all phrase. And I don't want to call it a cop-out. But it's sort of a catch-all, but if you really understand it, it requires a level of intelligence to receive. Mystery. There's a lot of mysteries in the faith, right? And when you say mystery, it isn't something to say, well, I don't understand, so therefore I'll ignore it. Mystery requires us to elevate beyond our small minds, right? My small mind says Nobody resurrects, right? I've never seen anybody come back from the dead. That doesn't happen, right? Although it has happened and people have come back, literally come back from the dead. And you can even watch YouTube videos about people who were clinically dead and came back. But anyway, but for a small minded person, they'd be like, that can't happen. No way, right? But without having facts, without having science, an intelligent person, a sensitive person who can ascend to the supernatural virtue of faith will say, I don't understand it, but I assent to it. It is a mystery that I elevate myself to receive. That's pretty powerful. That requires courage and it requires a level of intelligence that not everybody can ascend to. Faith requires intelligence. Faith isn't dumb faith. Faith isn't dumb. Faith is so funny. There's this meme. I used to sh- I would share it around. There's a meme, and it shows a bell curve, right? And it, and it shows three t- kinds of people. It's about faith, right? And on one, is a, it's a picture. On this part of the bell curve, it's a picture of, like, a dumb guy, like, with one tooth, like he's a yokel, right? Just like a, just like a, a simple man. And he's like, I believe, I believe in Jesus, right? I believe in God, right? He's like, just like a, like a guy, right? He's not very intelligent, probably... Probably can't read, but he's like, well, I believe, I believe, I believe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe. Right. Then on the, on the top of the bell curve, there's this like genius, right. Who's got like, he's, he's got all this book smarts. Right. And he's like, I don't believe I, he just, he can't figure it out. Just, I don't have the information. I don't have the facts. So he's an atheist. Right. So it's atheist up at the top. Right. And then down at the bottom, there's like, you know the picture with the mind blowing, like super ascentive genius, like the type of genius that is supernatural, boom, like a seer down below. And so it's that, in, that hyper intelligent person that believes in God. So you got the two ends of the spectrum was like, yeah, the dumb guy believes in God because he doesn't need much information. You got the guy over here who's so smart that he's ascended to faith. But then you got the top of the bell curve, the guy that has so much information that he's so confused and so attached to the physical representation of what he could see, taste, smell, and touch that he can't get it. He can't get it. He's so smart, he can't get it, right? It requires a sensitivity. So, and, not, and listen, man, not everybody gets it. Like, I don't know where I am on that spectrum. I might be the dumb guy. I, I might be so dumb that I have faith. <laughs> I'm willing to accept that. I'd like to think that I've assented to faith. I'd like to think that I have lots of information. I mean, I'm surrounded by books upon books upon books and all kinds of books. I want to know everything, right? I'm like the guy up there in a way, right? I want to know. And since I've been exploring the faith, I mean, I have a whole new bookshelf full of books about the faith. But I might be dumb. But I have faith, right? It requires a a special, I think it even requires a grace from God, right? It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. I think some people, faith comes easy to, it just comes easy, right? And in a way it comes easy to me. I don't know why. Faith comes easy to me. But some people struggle, like my wife. My wife is, my wife is much more analytical than me. My wife is, she's a very smart woman. Faith doesn't come easy to her, but she ascends to faith, meaning she takes 
my word, first of all, she takes she t- she takes me seriously. So that means she's receptive. And she asks a lot of questions and she and she challenges me. My wife challenges me, but she walks the path. You have to walk the path. You can't like you remember it was a Jane Goodall who is the woman that could teach us all about the gorillas, right? Gorillas in the mist. There was a movie about gorillas in the mist. And so for many, many, many years, scientists thought they knew everything about gorillas because they would watch them from afar. Oh, watch the gorilla. Oh, but don't get too close. We just watching them, watching them, watching them. But this woman, I think it's Jane Goodall, she went (laughs) to go live with the gorillas. She was like, I want to really know about these gorillas. I can only get so much by watching from over here. So she goes and lives with the gorilla. That woman blew everybody's mind about what she discovered about gorillas. She really knew about gorillas. Why? Because she got in there with them. That's how some people, dare I say most moderns, come to faith. You have to... You have to get in there with it and wrestle with it, right? Was it Jacob that wrestled with God, right? All the great, uh, lots of the greatest saints wrestle with God, right? Wrestle with him. I wrestle with God in a way too, in my own way, in a different way, right? Because I like to sin. <laughs> I, wanna, I want my cake and eat it too. And so I wrestle with God on that, right? That's a wrestling for me in my mind. Like, am I really sinning? Did God really say that, right? Satan tempts me all the time. So I wrestle that way, but I do believe in God. I do believe Jesus is who he says he is. is, right? But I wrestle with sin. So I don't think you get any... I think a lot of times we got to wrestle. I don't think that it just comes... Or all things come easy to people. You know, I'm talking about faith comes easy to me, but I wrestle with God in different ways. So... If you're, an, if you're a logical man, you got to read Thomas Aquinas. You must read Thomas Aquinas. I can't, I struggle with Thomas Aquinas because he's that smart, right? Like I said, I'm, ki- I'm kind of a dumb, I'm not that smart. I'm curious, I want to know, but I'm not that smart. But guys who are really smart, you know who you got to listen to? Father Ripperger, Ripperger, somebody, somebody help me say it right, whatever. Chad Ripperger, Father Ripperger, on YouTube, he is he is a uh, he's a Thomist, theologian, philosopher. You know who's also a really smart philosopher? Bishop Robert Barron. A lot of people knock Robert Barron, but he is G. He's genius. He's smart. He's a philosopher. If you want to hear somebody describe Christianity in a in a in a scientific philosophical way for the modern man? Mind to accept, listen, Bishop Barron. Bishop Barron is, is amazing. I love him. He's helping me catechize my children. I can't catechize my family with Thomas Aquinas. I can't catechize, catechize them with, with uh, Father Ripperger. I need Bishop Barron. And then, uh, you know who else? Uh, Timothy Gordon. I had him on. I did, a, I did a talk with him. Get Timothy Gordon's books. Read Timothy Gordon. He has courses on Aristotle and Plato and mind-blowing stuff. So that's another thing about Catholicism because we have doctors of the faith. We have very intelligent people. And I would say that Thomas Aquinas, I'm not going to say, but I'm going to assert and share that Thomas Aquinas was a, he studied all of the great philosophers, all the great, all the great uh, rational thinkers, logical thinkers. You shouldn't have to, no man should have to come to the faith without information to wrestle with, without words to put to his ideas and thoughts and feelings. And, uh, and Thomas Aquinas, is no, he's not short of words at all. So I would suggest you look into his stuff, dude. Hope that helps, man. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, 
and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word King on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.